Are you curious about the major steps necessary to make and negotiate an offer on a home you'd like to purchase? Stick around for part two of our three-part series on the home buying process. Hi everyone, I'm Laura Elijah Ryder with Halcyon Home Group, part of Keller Williams Realty Consultants here in Roswell, Georgia. If you're new to our channel, consider subscribing. We publish new content every Tuesday regarding real estate and all things real estate related here in the North Atlanta metro market. So now that we've found the home that you'd like to purchase, let's jump right into all of the details involved in the offer and negotiation process. So first let's talk about offer price. If you're working with our team, we will have pulled for you what's called a comparative market analysis. We look at similar homes that have sold in the neighborhood or the surrounding area to help determine an offer price. This is important because we want to ensure that you're paying what's called market value for the home. And that could be below list, it could be the list price, or in some hot markets, that could actually be above list price. So next let's talk about earnest money. Now typically, the more earnest money you put down, the more it shows the seller how serious you are about buying their home. And you can think of earnest money like a deposit. At closing, that deposit can either go towards your closing costs or it can go toward your down payment. Now one thing to keep in mind about earnest money is that it is at risk up until closing. So what that means is if you were to default on the contract terms and not close on the home, then the seller would be able to retain your earnest money as liquidated damages. So the next monetary item that we're going to talk about is closing costs. During the pre-approval process, you spoke with your lender about the amount of closing costs that you would need to bring to the table in order to close on the home. Now, depending on how much cash you have on hand for your down payment and for your closing costs, you may or may not need to ask the seller to pay for a part or all of your closing costs. Now, one thing to consider if you are in a competitive market is whether you want to ask the seller for closing costs or not, because for the seller, those dollars will factor into the net amount that the seller is receiving on the purchase of their home. So next let's talk about the closing date and possession. So in addition to understanding the time frame that's best for you to move in, we always reach out to the listing agent as well to see if there's a particular time frame that the seller is looking for. Because if we can match your time frame with the seller's time frame, that's going to make your offer more appealing to the seller. So the most common type of possession we see is at closing, where the seller gives you the keys right at the table and you can move in as soon after closing as you'd like to. Typically the seller will have moved out one to two days ahead of time and that allows us to get in the home and do what's called a walkthrough the day before or the morning of your closing. And the walkthrough is important because that gives us a chance to put our eyes on the home and make sure that it's in the same condition that it was when you went under contract to purchase the home. Now, unless you and the seller have a particular reason that you need to close toward the early part of the month, we typically recommend that you close toward the end of the month. And that's because if you're getting a loan, your prepaids are going to be less by closing toward the end of the month, and therefore your closing costs will be less. And remember, interest is paid in arrears. So if you close, say, June 25th, your first payment is not going to be due until August 1st. So next is the selection of the closing attorney, which in our market is typically selected by the buyer. Now do keep in mind, if you're getting a loan, the closing attorney is actually representing the lender. And in Georgia, especially if you're out of state, it's important to understand that the buyer and the seller don't typically have their own attorneys in addition to the closing attorney. So next let's talk about inspections and due diligence. So in Georgia, we have what's called a due diligence period, and that's a negotiated number of days that the buyer has to complete inspections and really determine whether or not they want to proceed with purchasing the home. So the most common types of inspections that we see during due diligence are the general inspection, a radon test, and also a termite inspection, which oftentimes is required by the lender. 
Based on the general inspection, we may also recommend other specialty inspections like HVAC or roof, especially because these are such big ticket items to repair or replace. In addition to inspections, we might also use this time to invite contractors out to give us estimates so that we can understand how substantial the repairs may be. Now let's talk about potential exhibits to the contract. Two of the most common that we see are the seller's property disclosure, and if the home is in a community with a homeowner's association, we'll see the community association fees disclosure. Typically, we've had a chance to review these two forms before submitting the offer, and that's because the seller is asked to complete these disclosures at the time that they're listing their home. The property disclosure gives the seller the opportunity to tell us all about their home, including age of the roof, age of major mechanicals, it tells us whether or not there's a termite bond on the property, and also the fixtures that are to remain with the home. For instance, does the fridge stay or go, washer and dryer, or blinds or light fixtures? The Community Association Fees Disclosure tells us what your monthly HOA fee is, what it includes, for instance, does it include swim, tennis, trash pickup. It also tells us whether or not there's an initiation fee, a master association fee on top of the regular homeowners association fee. It also tells us whether there's special assessments and transfer fees. The next exhibit included will either be an all cash exhibit, if you're paying cash, or a finance contingency if you're obtaining a loan. If it's a finance contingency, it will either be a VA, an FHA, or a conventional loan exhibit. Now the finance contingency is intended to protect you and your earnest money during the loan application and underwriting process. Although you received a pre-approval letter prior to writing the offer, this is the time that the lender does its due diligence to ensure that you're a viable buyer to give a loan to. Another element of the finance contingency is the appraisal contingency, and that protects you in the event that the home does not appraise for the sales price. Now, if that happens, it gives you the opportunity to try to go back and renegotiate with the seller. And if that doesn't work out, you have two options. You can either agree to pay the difference between the appraised value and the sales price in cash, or you can elect to walk away and receive a refund of your earnest money. Another potential exhibit is called the home to sell contingency, and that would be included if your purchase was contingent upon you closing on an existing home in order to purchase this new home. The last section of the purchase and sale agreement is called special stipulations. And this is a part of the contract that gives you an opportunity to ask the seller for things that might not have been addressed in the body of the contract or the exhibits. For example, if this particular property is in an HOA, then it gives you an opportunity to ask the seller for a copy of the covenants, conditions, and restrictions so that you can review them during the due diligence period. Another example might be asking the seller to purchase a home warranty for you that is good for one year from the date of closing, and it gives you a little bit of peace of mind in case there's any unexpected repairs during your first year of home ownership. So once we've compiled the terms of your offer, we're going to send it to you to review and sign via electronic signature. And don't worry, if you're not experienced with electronic signature, we have a great staff to help you get up to speed. While you're reviewing and signing your offer, we work on crafting a cover letter to the seller to tell them a little bit more about you and why you'd be a great fit for this home. Once we receive your signed offer back from you, we'll package it together with your pre-approval letter and the cover letter and send it to the listing agent to present to the seller. Thank you for watching part two of our three-part series. If you like what you saw today, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see segment three or any of our other future videos, please subscribe. We look forward to seeing you next time for all things real estate and real estate related in the North Atlanta market.